Hello, this is the Lord's Legion and welcome to a brand new movie review and as you can see this is a part of the series known as The Path to Infinity War where I'm going to be looking back on each and every film within the Marvel Cinematic Universe up until the release of Avengers Infinity War. And this is going to be the final review for this series at least until I do Avengers Infinity War and then I'll probably be focusing on Ant-Man and the Wasp and so on and so forth. And in case anyone is confused on where Thor Ragnarok or Black Panther is, I've done both of these reviews months ago when the original movies came out and they are still in the current playlist. And if you want to know my thoughts on either Thor Ragnarok or Black Panther, feel free to check in the playlist. But the main topic at hand in this review is of course Spider-Man Homecoming, which many people think that this movie is a huge breath of fresh air for the franchise. And is Spider-Man Homecoming as fresh as everyone else makes it out to be? Well, let's find out. Now in terms of the plot, Spider-Man Homecoming goes back to basics in that Peter Parker is trying to balance his life as a high school student as well as a hero. While at the same time, Iron Man is the one who is trying to mentor Peter Parker. But when this dangerous new enemy in the name of the Vulture arises, it is up to Spider-Man to prove himself in being the ultimate hero that he is. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say this, but I absolutely love Spider-Man Homecoming and it's probably my favourite Spider-Man film ever. Because it's just a personal story and I honestly love how small scale it really is. Now it really goes without saying at this point, but Tom Holland does embody Spider-Man and Peter Parker. And it is great to see this character shine after his debut in Captain America Civil War. And sure, Spider-Man does grow up quite a bit in this film, but at the very least he's only human. He makes a lot of mistakes and he tries to learn from them. And it was pretty great to see Peter Parker grow as a character the more the movie progresses. Now in terms of the main villain, Michael Keaton did a phenomenal job as the Vulture and is easily the best Spider-Man villain in live action since Dr. Octopus in Spider-Man 2. And is hands down one of the best villains in the MCU period. Because he really does tick all of the boxes for a great villain. Because when you watch the Vulture as a whole, he does have reasonable motivations and he's also very intimidating and is even personal to Spider-Man. And it's really rare for any MCU villain to tick all of these other boxes. And the only other MCU villain that I can think of who pulled that off is of course Killmonger. And it surprised the hell out of me because the Vulture was one of these villains in the Spider-Man mythos who I was never particularly fond of. Going into Spider-Man Homecoming, I was a little bit sceptical in that Tony Stark could potentially steal the limelight from Peter Parker, and surprisingly, this was far from the truth. Because they used Tony Stark pretty sparingly, and he did have a purpose in this film, and as to of course mentor Spider-Man. And yet everyone knows by now that Robert Downey Jr. can play Tony Stark in his sleep. But I was pleased to see that they did use Tony Stark sparingly and he did have just enough screen time. Marisa Tomei did a pretty good job as Aunt May, however I do feel like her character was a little wasted in this movie, but then again, maybe she will have a bigger role within the sequel. Given that little twist ending of course. Jacob Batalon plays as Ned Leeds in this film and honestly, I thought he was an annoying comic relief. Sure he was useful as Spider-Man's little sidekick and whatnot, but honestly, he just got on my nerves and he almost reminded me on how terrible Ant-Man's sidekick was from his standalone film. We also have Laura Harrier as Liz Allen and she was just a bland love interest for Peter Parker, although nothing particularly bad. Just nothing noteworthy at all. Tony Revololi plays as Flash Thompson in this film and it is pretty interesting to see this character as more of a troll than an actual bully. Although I do wish I wish that this character was more of a chock kind of bully so that we could eventually see Agent Venom in the MCU. But either way, he did do a pretty good job and he was fairly enjoyable as this new version of Flash Thompson. And finally we have Zendaya as Michelle in this film and she is pretty interesting and enjoyable. Although people still need to calm down with the whole MJ thing because honestly it was nothing more but a nod. And she's not even the legitimate Mary Jane Watson in the first place. Now in terms of the fight scenes in this movie, they were done relatively well. From the bank robbery from the first act, to the boat scene in the second act, and even the final climax between Spider-Man and the Vulture. And I've gotta admit, every fight scene in this movie were either memorable or flat out exciting. Although the special effects in this movie, I do feel like that they were pretty hit and miss, most specifically with Spider-Man himself, and I'm not sure if it's just the overall design of the suit, but he did really look rubbery in a lot of places. It almost reminded me of the first two Spider-Man films, in that Spider-Man was incredibly rubbery on screen. Although to be fair, there are a fair bit of CG that actually work as well. 
And plus, what I really do appreciate about Spider-Man Homecoming is the fact that they had a completely unique tone, in that it's more of a high school drama superhero flick, which actually does work for Spider-Man, and I do appreciate that they've been more lenient towards the high school setting, because in the last Spider-Man films, they kind of glossed that side over. And while I'm at it, in terms of the comedy in this film, it is a pretty hilarious movie, and while there are a few stinkers along the way, there are very few and far between, and the bad jokes only really come from Ned Leeds. But in the end, there's quite a lot to enjoy from Spider-Man Homecoming, and I honestly think that's the best Spider-Man film that we've ever got so far. And why I love this movie so much is the fact that it went back to basics, and they really did both Peter Parker and Spider-Man justice. I love the really basic plot, I love the majority of the characters, I love the overall tone of this movie, and I especially love pretty much every action scene in this film. And despite how there are a few terrible jokes as well as a few terrible characters, I can easily look past that because for what it is, it's a very well self-contained movie. And so for my final verdict for Spider-Man Homecoming, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 9 out of 10. And what else is there to say that hasn't been said already about this film because truth be told, it's a really solid Spider-Man flick. So what do you think of Spider-Man Homecoming? Do you believe that this is the definitive Spider-Man film? Or do you prefer the Sam Raimi's or even the Amazing Spider-Man films? Comment below and share some thoughts. And as always, thank you guys for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. Take care and have a good one.